This is a Funny Science Fiction Podcast Spotlight. Welcome to the Funny Science Fiction Podcast, where stormtroopers don't laugh at our jokes because they always miss the point. I would be remiss if we didn't take a moment to talk about the brave men and women who have boldly gone and not returned. We're talking about our beloved red shirts. Our show is brought to you by our charity sponsor, the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund. Imagine the comfort you'll give red shirt crewman number 42 when he knows that when he puts on the red shirt and gets eaten by the carnivorous alien fungus on Teller Prime, six minutes into episode 19, that he didn't leave his family destitute and without hope. Because the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund has his back and his left femur. And remember that this fall, 100% of all profits from our fictional charity, the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund, merchandise sale goes to a real charity, Wish Upon a Teen. So we would like to welcome to the show, Mark Artuso. Did I say that right? Perfect. Artuso, a loyal funny science fiction Facebook group member and meme expert extraordinaire, Trekkie, <laughs> and of course, today's funny science fiction spotlight. So, Mark, you're a Trekkie, right? You, you like Star Trek. Am I, am I right on that? That is an accurate statement, yes. Okay, <laughs> it's accurate. Um, I assume for quite a few years, but now I got to ask this right off the bat. Who is your favorite character? You can, you can go all Star Trek series, is fine. Who's your favorite character and who's your least favorite character in the Star Trek realm? Starting off with least favorite um through no fault of his own neelix just <laughs> grinds on me <laughs> it, it's it's actually a tie between neelix and kess yeah anytime there's a a, a kess story or a neelix story see you next week guys <laughs> but, uh, um through no fault of the actor or the actress uh, they're, they're fine people they just the, those the characters just yeah. bug me um <laughs> I'd say my favorite out of all Trek is is original series Spock. I mean, he's been with me throughout okay. 54 years here. So um, I, I would say, yeah, definitely Leonard Nimoy Spock. Is it is it wrong that I was crossing my fingers over here going, his least favorite is Kirk. His least favorite is Kirk. His least favorite is Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> so, his least favorite is, is Kirk. Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> Being that you grew up around the Star Trek era, especially the original series era, um, that means you also grew up around the Star Wars era. So Absolutely. do you have a favorite character in Star Wars? Uh, I'd, have to, I'd have to stick with Vader. <laughs> Vader? Okay. Yeah. All right. Of course. We can live with that. Um, We're good with that. He's like, I'm not going to say I haven't seen Star Wars. I can't tell these guys <laughs> this. <laughs> No, no, man. I saw that, him on a lunchbox that, once. He was cool. I saw him on a lunchbox. <laughs> no, I, that one episode with Flash Gordon really got me. It just, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> that crossover just was uh, a little too ambitious. Yeah. <laughs> we actually, in my little group of friends, have a, a a breakup too. I'm I'm the Trek guy. I have a buddy who's the Star Wars guy. <laughs> uh, it it uh, we we like both franchises. There's there's right. there's plenty of room for both it's it's not like one against the other but right. he's more star wars oriented i'm i'm just track just for, i don't know why it's good to specialize it's fun. It's fun. yeah you gotta, you gotta have your need you know? exactly so if you could take a character from star wars and then plop them right onto the bridge of star trek in mm. place of a senior officer who would that character in Star Wars be and who would they replace? You know, I've, I've, I kind of guessed moderate on a different page and, and I've seen so many of these things come across with this Star Wars, Star Trek crossover <laughs> thing. <laughs> uh, uh, from Star Wars on to Star Trek. You know, I got I want you back on the bridge. Oh, get out of my head, I man! I, I was just thinking like Chewbacca replacing Worf. Yeah, exactly. And, right. but, like, I no was one thinking... can understand him, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking little Annie replacing Wesley Crusher. <laughs> 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 I hate sand. 
It you could explain every... Chewbacca as just a new version of the Klingons anyway. So in oh, right. It's yeah. uh, Klingon Wookiee. Cool. <laughs> right. And see, and I just saw Vader fo uh, force checking the crap out of everybody. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that's rough. Now, it, it, obviously, you've been around a group for a while. I mean, we've got everything from fans of Doctor Who to Doctor Smith to Doctor Octopus to Doctor Horrible Sing Along Song. Uh, that being said, who's your favorite sci-fi doctor, and why is it David Tennant? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're sticking with the Who franchise, I'm a Tom Baker. Um, okay. I, I love Tennant. I love Smith. I even love Capaldi for some of it but uh <laughs> yeah i feel the exact same way with capaldi like some of it was like hey that was great and then you're like yeah, yeah it's all right yeah that's good ditch, ditch the electric guitar stuff and that but, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah definitely tom baker in that in that franchise nice now let's uh, let's go star trek who's your favorite star trek doctor star trek oh, that's mccoy easy nice i'm, I'm old school no, no fresh on pressure huh <laughs> well, if, if, Looking at amorous advances. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, and next question. <laughs> next question. Would you look at the time? Whoa. <laughs> so you're, you're a lifelong Trekkie. So let's talk about the differences between original Trek and new Trek, or what's often called JJ Trek. JJ Trek. Mm -hmm. JJ Trek. Sure. So as someone who witnessed the original series in person in the area that was released, how does new Trek compare? Is there an area where JJ Trek got it right? or the, what areas would you have made better? Boy, when I hear questions like that, I hear salvos going up because you can't answer that really correctly right. for everybody. My own opinion would be that I think they made a great stab at it. Um, <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed the first movie, the, the, the reboot, um, okay. to be honest. The, there, there, there are problems with it, to be sure, but you see the enterprise come up and start blipping those missiles out in space and stuff like that. That, that kind of gets the old spirit going from the old series. Um, I would, if, if, if it was up to me, I would prefer keeping it more with the original timeline and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. They took a little too many liberties, I would say, in my mm -hmm. opinion, Fair but enough. I still, I found, I still found the reboots enjoyable. So, like, right. I, I'm a bigger fan of, of the newer Trek more than the, the old Trek. Sacrilege. Uh, well, <laughs> it's closer to Star Wars, let's be honest. Um, but, you know, for me, the, in the old Trek, Wrath of Khan is, is the, the best movie out of, the best thing out of anything that Star Trek had to offer. So I had a problem with, with the Into Darkness, with the way that they, you know, with Benedict Cumberpatch's version of, of Khan. You know, just didn't have the same, you know. Out of the month of bomb. Yeah, it just didn't have the same, you know, open chest swarthiness, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I think Dad just spoke an alien language. Not enough uh, chest hair for Tim. <laughs> <laughs> that may not have come out right. Uh, <laughs> all right, so as one of our more involved members, you share quality memes that are both funny and they encourage group involvement. And we really, really appreciate that. So, so thank you for everything that you've done for the group, Mark. We've, we've enjoyed your yeah. company. Oh, sure. You guys got a great page going. Yeah, we, we're having fun with we're it. We're working hard at it. It's so other than having a few moments at your disposal, what comes to you, when, or what inspires you, rather, when it comes to meme creation? And what does involvement of the group mean to you on your memes? Uh, I would say part of it's probably straight up narcissism I, I i just like to see reacts on on memes <laughs> yeah um you're self-aware <laughs> yeah I, I i i gauge i i like to prop up two different memes against each other to see what is more popular at a time it's time of day it's it's public opinion it's all sorts of different things that you want to throw together and have mm. the best reaction to them if some fall flat they're they they do and that's funny in itself when a when a man bombs but right. if one takes off <laughs> if one takes off or, or or gets a lot of reactions you made at least one person laugh for the day i mean that's enough for me it's okay yeah. mark this is a safe space you can tell us how you feel <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing about our group is we have so much involvement you know we got 80,000 members but there's almost 70,000 people that are active in the group Wow, That's yeah, hundreds, which is really high. That's pretty amazing, yeah. Yeah, and we get so mm -hmm. many people and uh, and uh, and you know, like yourself, that are uh, that are uh, 
providing that quality mm -hmm. and, and keeping it up there. You know, we get some repeats and stuff. We got to have those for the new members that haven't seen them yet. But yeah, yeah. of course. Our sci-fi knitting group's not doing quite as well. That's no. <laughs> <laughs> but the sci-fi underwater basket weaving group. <laughs> yeah, that's doing that's actually rather well. Kelp is big in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> and we're able to socially distance. That's the most important Yeah, right. Thing. The water Perfect. barrier yeah. helps. <laughs> so I'm kind of the same generation you, maybe a couple of years your senior. And I was, uh, you got me thinking about some of the old sci-fi. So I went back through and I was looking at uh, 70s sci-fi, all right? Oh. We're going to just stick to the 70s because that's when I was uh, a teenager, you know? And uh, <laughs> so I picked some of my favorite and I thought we could talk about a couple of these. The animated, Star Trek, the animated series. Sure. Six Million Dollar Man, Logan's Run, Battlestar Galactica, Mork and Mindy, just because... It's Mork and Robin Williams, and then Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Nice. What do you got? I'd love to hear your opinions on any of those. Did you watch any of those? And oh my God, it? every single one of those. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the animated series I, I, is kind of just a fleeting memory with me. I may have to revisit that one. Yeah, it's been a while for me too. That, it's funny you mentioned like uh, those kind of eras are, are separated by not too much in time, but since I'm, I identify with the old series, people after me would identify with the next generation. Mm. People thinking about the old series that I like, maybe like me thinking about the old Buck Rogers or Flash Gordon right. before us. Exactly. So I can see how they would see it filled with a little bit of cheese, which we're accustomed to and we like. Right. But right. you can see how the new CGI and the flashy graphics would appeal to maybe a younger crowd. Yeah, you know, putting a putting a horn on a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that alien. That's crazy. That's an alien. Yeah. That's an impressive that. alien, mom. I think uh, so we have a little bit of a, a quiz since we're uh, talking a 70s sci-fi, TV sci-fi. And I thought, well, I, I did a search on it and I found some that I barely remembered and I, you know, that kind of traumatized me as a child. That were oh, no. so bad. Like all of them. So I made a, I made a little uh, obscure '70s TV sci-fi quiz. Are you are you up to a challenge? Absolutely. All right. So if you get, we got five questions. If you get three out of the five, we'll give you one of our red shirt widows and orphans mugs. Sweet. And if you, uh, mine's <laughs> invisible. You go. Hey, Nate. <laughs> Way to participate there, horse snoot. Uh, <laughs> And so, but if you get all five, you'll get a bonus gift. So, however, if uh, if if you fail epically, uh, we'll make a funny meme and put your face on it. Okay? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I love the zero hesitation. Absolutely. <laughs> Siri, Siri, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> all right, no googly. <laughs> no googly. <laughs> all right, so. The first one's an easy one, so hang on. 1974, two astronauts and a sympathetic chimp friend are fugitives in a future Earth dominated by a civilization of humanoid apes, starring Roddy McDowell. This is a TV show. Was the name of that TV show Going Ape, Monkey's Uncle, or Planet of the Apes? Own a friend. I'm going Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes. Yeah. <laughs> I had forgotten they made a TV show. <laughs> monkey's Uncle sounds like it was like a sitcom where these like yeah. right? like these all these been. monkeys owned a human or something like uh, that. You know, like oh, a Monkey's <laughs> Uncle. I almost <laughs> bought it. Yeah, it was pretty good. Well, especially the next one. All right, 1975 and 76. Two Ooh. years this show ran. It's the misadventures of two maintenance workers who were accidentally launched into outer space, starring Bob Denver. Bob no Denver. Him. So God, his acting career never it, really was made it. Was it called one, Far Out Space Nuts, two, <laughs> Gilligan in Space, or three, Space Monkey Wrench? You know, just on a guess, I think I've heard that first title before. Far out space nuts? Yes. Yes, you're right. <laughs> I don't know how you got that. 
And we'll, uh, we'll throw up graphics during the video. The cover looks so hilarious. I don't know why, but that little Muppet guy, he looks so familiar to me. I'm like, have I seen Yeah. He, 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 <laughs> this looks so familiar. That's Are hilarious. we just going to gloss over the genius of Gilligan in space? I love it. <laughs> right? I mean, there amazing. was also another show. They tried, once Gilligan Island was over, they tried like two or three different Re reboots. With the same exact plot, but in different settings. Oh, that's funny. Dusty's Trails, which was a Western, Western based on really? Gilligan formula oh, take, of these people oh, going across the West and like a lost wagon train. It just takes yeah. one Gilligan to open the airlock and then it's... Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> right. Captain, I forgot to right, you put the plasma the from the left nacelle. Oh, Gilligan! <laughs> <laughs> That would have been. <laughs> that would have been. You'd wear a red shirt. Yeah. All right, so you're two for two so far. You're doing good. You're one away from the mug. All right, seventy six and through seventy eight, three years. After fully recovering from her nearly fatal bout of bionic rejection, Jamie Summers, the first female cyborg, is assigned on spy missions of her own, starring Lindsay Wagner. Do you need the multiple choices on this one? The bionic woman. <laughs> you got it. Six million dollar woman. The bionic woman. Or number three, the board queen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now imagining like uh, a '90s serial, like in the style of like a working woman type with the board queen, just like right? a pants suit and a briefcase, <laughs> like. Marlo Thomas. Your day at work, honey. <laughs> I assimilated. <laughs> I assimilated all the files. It's her. The cutest is her husband. Like, <laughs> vegetables. Perfect. Be hilarious. <laughs> all right, 1977. This one barely ran a year. It's a scientific expedition in the Atlantic Ocean that becomes lost in the Bermuda Triangle and washes up on an uncharted island. They meet up with travelers from other times, planets, and dimensions. Who have also become trapped, and together they slide through portals from one dimension to the next, hoping to find the one that leads home. Again, <laughs> this stars Roddy McDowell. So, is it the one Bermuda Triangle, two portal sliders, or three Fantastic Journey? Fantastic Journey, I remember it well. You do. Oh there you go. Wow. Uh, I didn't remember sure it all. You're doing that great. intro green, sounds exactly green clouds like and. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds so much like Quantum Leap. <laughs> I know. I'm pretty, I'm the pretty last sure uh, that leads home. They had their concepts down, just not the, not the uh, scripts. I'm pretty uh, sure portal stuff. sliders are on the menu at Red Robin. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, would you like your portal sliders? We're open for sponsorship. <laughs> Red yeah. Robin. They have portal <laughs> yeah, on them. <laughs> yeah. Put up on. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so the final question for the big enchilada. <laughs> the bonus gift. Oh, oh, yes. 1975 and 76, from the world of Sid and Marty Croft. A flying saucer lands on modern day Earth and two characters who fly it, Fi and Fum, invite a young boy and his babysitter to take a little trip with them. Unfortunately, something goes wrong and they end up lost in space. <laughs> Each episode has them traveling to a different Earth of the future in their efforts to get Jerry and Alice back home. Starring Jim Neighbors, a.k.a. Gomer Pyle, Golly. and Ruth Buzzy from Laughing. So was, it, was the name of the show, Fi and Fum Land on Their Bum, two, The Lost Saucer, or three, The Crazy Space Saucer? Holy smokes! I actually remember this one. Do you? Oh my I goodness! I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with number two on a guess. It was the last. You got it, Mark. Well, wow. golly, we got them you know, all. That's, that's far too much TV for me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Did we're you revealing... have a life in the '70s, Mark? <laughs> oh, that, we're, that was my thing. That was his right. life. That's yeah. right. Well, I mean, my just... mama said I couldn't go out because the sun shines. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I'm going to go ahead and send you a uh, autographed copy of my book, Custodians of the Cosmos. Oh, fantastic! Thank you so much. Uh, it's super fun, bug. You know, it's funny. And it's the like, mug, of course. 
Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of listening to this description. Fi and Fum invite a young boy and his babysitting to take a trip with them after they crash on a strange earth. It's like you crash land on a strange planet. You meet this kid. You want to come with us? Oh, go away! You want to leave in the planet? You want to just join us and leave your family and parents? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> try, try hiking was hitchhiking was still a thing right back in the right day. Yeah. so i think it was try right. describing hr puff and stuff to right someone. oh That's dude true. i we, have we seen hr them, puff and stuff i watched boys to watch it when they were yes. um, i did watch what is HR that and magic puff flute on there yes. isn't there some like ready the magic flute or the other one sigmund the sea monster that yeah. one. Yep. <laughs> good girl uh, Butterf what is the Girl, butterfly one? Running. Flying oh. on in the sky. <laughs> Butter something. I see my next memes coming up. Well, <laughs> yeah, there you go. We gotta put, we gotta get some more Sid and Marty Croft memes out oh, there. Because, absolutely. Oh my goodness. <laughs> They're hilarious. What's a Marty I am, Croft? <laughs> I am proud to say that wow. I don't know who HR Puff and stuff is, so I'm you good. Don't. Oh no. well. Oh, you you, you, oh you're you gonna We'll tie you, you to a chair sometime. And do <laughs> 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 no, 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 I don't want to. It's, kind of it's kind of a muppet, but not it will, a muppet. It watches the show again, or it gets the hose again. <laughs> if you are puffing stuff, if you mix what? Wizard of Oz with Sesame Street, and, and then add like twenty percent of David <laughs> Bowie, you're getting Twilight close. Zone. Yeah, yeah with the Twilight Zone. Zone. Yeah, Witchy oh, Poo yeah. was like from Wizard of Oz, basically. But right. Oh, Witchy right. Poo, yeah. In yeah. a world where the witch from wow. Wizard of Oz meets Big Bird. <laughs> cross, cross the wizard, the nice. witch from Wizard of Oz with Big Bird, and you have Witchy Poo. All right. Yeah, that's it well, exactly. <laughs> Mark, you've been you've been awesome to have on. Thank you so much. Oh, this is yeah, well, that was fun, guys. Mark. Absolutely fun. I was thoroughly, uh, thoroughly impressed at your, uh, your level yeah. of obscure uh, With, '70s disco-laden right? sci-fi is impressive. Shameful! It's shameful. <laughs> <laughs> shameful. No. Some people are doing physics up here. I got Gilligan's Island right? and Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Mark, for being on the show today, and also just being a great part of our Facebook group. We love yeah, having you in the fun. group. And uh, thank you for being on uh, Spotlight in our podcast as well. So um, if anybody would want to be in our Facebook group or be a Spotlight on the show, yeah. perhaps you have a cool sci-fi project to share, a cosplay, an insane Jar Jar Binks, Binks themed collection, <laughs> uh, be sure to shoot us a message uh, in the group. Uh, if you aren't part of the group, please come on over and enjoy the memes. And if you are part of our group, Head on over to YouTube, your favorite podcast provider, subscribe, uh, give us a review. Mm -hmm. um, it's such a huge thank you to us and helps us uh, produce more content. And it really does make a difference mm -hmm. for the show. So remember yeah. also, give to the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund. 100% of profits go of the merchandise go to Wish Upon a Teen that helps sick kids in hospitals have a more comfortable stay uh, when they mm -hmm. have extended stays. So um, thank you all for listening and thanks for all the fish. And thank you, Mark, so much. <laughs> thank you, guys. We'll see you guys. That was, that was fun. fun. Bye. We have a great deal from our new sponsor, Uncanny Brands. Just for our listeners here at Funny Science Fiction, get one of their Star Wars lightsaber hand blenders and get $5 off with the code FUNNYSCIFI. That's F-U-N-N-Y-S-C-I-F-I. -I. Thank you for listening or watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like us on your favorite podcast platform and YouTube. If you've enjoyed our podcast, why not come join our Funny Science Fiction Facebook group, too? It's filled with giggle-worthy memes and gags. Visit our website, www.funnysci-fi.com. That's F-U-N-N-Y-S-C-I-F-I.com. You can also support us on Patreon, where you can get transcripts, bonus episodes, and other fun merch. That's at patreon.com slash F-U-N-N-Y-S-C-I-F-I. Look for links in the podcast description. On behalf of the rest of the hosts of Funny Science Fiction, we'd like to thank you for listening to this episode. If you'd like to be a guest on one of our future episodes, please contact us by means of our Facebook group, Funny Science Fiction. You can find us on Twitter or Instagram using the handle at Funny Sci-Fi, or you can go to DraytonAllen.com and click the Contact Me link at the bottom of the page. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Copyright 2020 by Drayton Allen. Original music by Jordan Michaels.
Reference to any specific product or entity mentioned in this podcast does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation of or by Funny Science Fiction or its sponsors. The views expressed by guests are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. If you have questions about this disclaimer, please contact us via email at drakenallen at drakenallen.com.